Fracture Healing Bridge Plate There are many types of orthopedic plates. Indication and the function for each plate could be different. Bridge plate is one of the plates used in orthopedics. It is the technique that gives the plate its name. Use it when the fracture has multi-fragments or comminution. The plate will bridge or bypass the comminution. The plate is fixed only to the two main fragments, the proximal and the distal fragments, leaving the fracture zone untouched, undisturbed. We don't expose it. It respects the biology of the fracture and the soft tissue, and it preserves the vascularity of the fracture, and that will help fracture healing and reduce complications. There is no need for anatomic reduction. The plate acts as an extra medullary splint. You can use one incision, but don't touch the middle segment that's comminuted, or you can use two incisions, one proximal and one distal. It is called submuscular. Sometimes you use minimally invasive incisions. I personally use two incisions, one proximal and one distal to the comminution, and I leave the comminuted area undisturbed. One of the best advances in orthopedic surgery and fixation of fractures is increased awareness of the value of the soft tissue. We try to protect the soft tissue around the bone. We will do minimal periosteal stripping and minimal dissection of the soft tissue around the fracture. And that is usually accomplished with bridge, plate, and sub muscular fixation. Try to obtain and maintain the length, the rotation, and the axial alignment. The percutaneous locking plates may have a higher chance of malunion. Usually use indirect reduction techniques, either manual traction or less commonly distractors. The plate will provide the fracture with relative stability. Usually the plate is long. The span segment is longer and the force is distributed over a larger distance. The strain on the plate will be lower with a higher resistance to fatigue. Fracture healing will be done by secondary callus or secondary bone healing. These are the stages of the secondary bone healing. A stage of hematoma, a stage of inflammation, a stage of soft callus, when you have type 2 collagen, and a stage of hard callus, when you start seeing more type 1 collagen, and a stage of remodeling, especially in children. The transforming growth factor beta-1 will make the mesenchymal cells produce type 2 collagen and proteoglycans. They are trying to produce endochondral ossification. On the other hand, insulin-like growth factor 2 will stimulate type 1 collagen. If the fracture is simple, then you don't need this technique. You will do anatomic reduction and you will get absolute stability with a shorter plate which will give you primary bone healing with osteonal remodeling and you will see type 1 collagen. What screws do you use? Locking screws provide axial and angulation stability. It is better to use a locking compression plate, LCP. The LCP plate allows insertion of standard screws and locking screws. 
The regular screws will allow approximation of the plate to the bone, and the relative stability of this plate will not require precise contouring when you use the locking screws. The rigidity of the plate decreases as the distance between the innermost screws increases. The screws close to the fracture see most of the stress. You need preoperative planning. It is better to use bicortical locking screws. It has better resistance to torsion than unicortical screws. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.